Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dave, and today I want to talk about a trade that I did today on LTC Properties. This is a REIT. I did something similar to this about a year ago. I'm back doing it again. So had a nice return on that trade. I'm hoping for the same kind of thing this time around. So I did buy it, and I immediately turned around and I sold it in the money call like we were talking about in a few previous videos. But I like the return, and I like the security that comes along with the return. So we'll talk through all that and explain why I like this one. But LTC Properties, in case you aren't familiar, is a monthly paying dividend stock, right? Or REIT in this case. And it's a real estate investment trust investing in senior housing and healthcare primarily through sale leasebacks, mortgage financing, joint ventures, construction financing, and structured finance solutions. The portfolio is comprised of approximately 50% senior housing and 50% skilled nursing properties. And let's face it, we're an aging population. All right, so let's jump over to Seeking Alpha real quick and take a quick look at LTC properties. Now, I am an affiliate of Seeking Alpha. There are affiliate links down below. I have to mention that. But uh, if it doesn't serve you, don't sign up for it. I find myself using it all the time, so I'm back here reading articles and referencing all this data. I like it. I use it every day. But with LTC properties, currently we're sitting at $37.67. This is the one-year chart. Nothing too exciting. The numbers over here are the important ones that we should start looking at. Yield. Right now, it's, it's a monthly payer. It pays 6.12%. I know a lot of people that watch this channel probably like that idea that it's a monthly payer. Uh, but the important ones here are the dividend rate of $2.28 and how that relates to the FFO. So funds from operation, uh, you know, which is adjusted for depreciation, $2.55. So it is covered. And as we know with REITs, they have to pay out a large portion of the funds that they earn here in the form of a dividend. And the PFFO, of course, is 1462 and that's a reasonable number for a PFFO. Now, uh, market cap, $1.5 Now, we can scroll down, and what I was talking about as far as the articles, there's lots of brilliant people on here, a lot smarter than me. And they write all this analysis. So you can see who's saying buy, who's saying hold. You can make some of your decisions from there. So they go and do uh, everything from basic to a uh, deep dive into LTC properties. Now, the rating summaries are interesting to me, too. So you got your Seeking Alpha authors who like it, Wall Street, not so sure, and a quant rating from Seeking Alpha of 3.63. But uh, keep that all in mind as we look a little bit at the ratings from Wall Street analysts who are saying, okay, well, it's kind of a hold. And that's okay for what I'm trying to do. I mean, not, it's not what I prefer necessarily to see, but uh, we can kind of see their targets, average price target going forward. We got a high of 42 and a low of 35. So keep that 35 in mind as we talk through the rest of this video real quick. And you can look at financials, earnings, and everything else. Let's just jump into dividends so you're aware of how this works here, right? So we got a dividend yield of 6.12%, 19 cents being paid out each month right now. X dividend date is 120. And with today being 117, you might not get this out till 118. Uh, if you want to receive that one, of course, you have to own it by 119, but it is paid out every single month. So that's just a real quick look. But yeah, take your time, read up. If you if this is something that you like as we move through this, just understand there's plenty more information out there to support your decision before you go out and you decide to buy or not buy. So because I like LTC properties, the REIT, I decided to go out and buy 300 shares. So today I bought 300 shares and I turned around and I sold it in the money call on LTC with an expiration out to 519 of 23. So 122 days from now. So the stock price that I paid, I paid $37.81. I sold a call at $35, which means it has to drop 7.434% for me to keep it between now and expiration. Now for that, I collected $1,110.97 and I had to put up $11,343 to buy the 300 shares. So Let's run through what could potentially happen with this particular trade. We've got 122 days till expiration, pays a 19 cent dividend. The next one is due. 120 is the ex uh, dividend date, so I have to own it by 119. I own it now. So uh, monthly paying, so I should receive four of these till it expires, right? So I should do that unless it gets called early, which could happen. But I'll collect $228 if I get all four of those. Now, if it stays above the strike price, which I'm fine with, then I will lose $843 for buying at $37.81 and selling it at $35. But I'll collect my dividends, I'll collect my premium, which means altogether $495 for me, which is 
4.37%. And if I annualize that, it's just over 13%. So I like these types of trade. It's not gonna make me, it's not gonna make me rich, but it's pretty secure. Now, some other potential things could happen, of course. LTC could fall apart. But uh, if it drops to $34, which is pretty significant, remember, uh, Wall Street was saying 35 was their low price that they're looking at. Um, we can't trust everything they say, though, right? But uh, if it falls to 34, same math working through that, I'll end up at 5.16% return over those 122 days. And then I can decide what to do. And my break even is all the way down at $33.35, which is 11.8% from the current price. So it has to fall 11.8% for me to break even on this trade. So again, security to trade and make about 500 bucks, right? So uh, that's the trade. That's how it kind of plays out here. And I'll show you on a chart too how it might look. But the delta value for this was also uh, 0.73. So uh, that's my trade. Now let's look at it on a chart. So I think it helps to look at these types of trades on a chart as well and kind of lay everything out. So uh, this is LTC Properties. This is a one-year chart. We're right around that 37.67. I think it was where we're at, 37.78 on this chart. And I'm going to drop in a red line here. That red line represents our strike price. So that's where we have to get to in order to keep the stock, right? So if it ends up expiring below that, we're going to keep those shares. It expires above well we know what happens right we're gonna get that 13 percent now i'm gonna drop in another line this is the purple line this is our break even when we just adjust for the premium so adjusted for the premium that we're collecting we're down to 34 dollars and 10 cents but there's another factor when it comes to ltc and that that's the fact that it pays you 19 cents per 100 shares every single month right that's the dividend so uh, we're going to drop another line in, the blue line. The blue line is adjusted for that dividend and the premium. So our break-even adjusted for both the premium and the dividends, if we receive all four, is all the way down to $33.35. So I think visually, this kind of puts it into perspective what we're looking at, right? Sitting up there around $37.80. And the fact that we can afford to go all the way down to $33.35 in order to break even sounds pretty appealing. Now... Next slide here is just a calculation so you can kind of see how this all comes together, right? So if we're above $35, then we're going to make that $495.67 because we get the premium, but we have to adjust for the fact that we're selling it for $35 after we're purchasing it for $37.81. And then we add in those dividends, we get that $495.67, right? So as long as it's above that red line, we make 13% or $495. Now, you see that 13%, there's the calculation that shows exactly how I got that 13%. Now, next slide. Again, break even at the very bottom, just to understand the calculation. If I make that $495.67, I subtract the difference between 35 and that 33.35, times the 300 shares, I get to zero, right? So that's just my break even calculation. So that's my trade with LTC properties. And I know this isn't for everyone. Uh, somebody brought up my stag trade and talked about the big width between the bid and the ask price. And I know that's a that's an obstacle that you have to deal with and figure out if it's right for you. Uh, but when you can make it work, I really like this. So whether it's LTC Properties or Stag, I've done with Store Capital, which is no longer around, APTS, which is no longer around, and O Income Realty Corp. I like to do these types of trades with these REITs. Um, and I've had pretty darn good results. Uh, and I don't put that much into each trade, honestly. I, I keep it somewhat limited. But uh, the tail of the tape here is if it expires above 35, fine. I'm going to take my 13% and walk away. If it comes close to 35, stays around that 36, 37, I'm going to roll it out and do the same thing. If it takes off, I'll probably move on to something else. Now, if it does collapse, right, if earnings come out and they're, they're horrible and this thing goes to 32, 31, 30, 28, well, then I'm going to have to figure out what my next move is. But that's one of the reasons I don't put too much into one individual trade and Another great question that I got this week was all about uh, trading, you know, options for income versus trading uh, as an enhancement to what you're trying to do. Like in this this case, I would call this an enhancement, right? I like LTC properties and I want to uh, utilize options in a creative way to try to create some income. So that's what I'm doing here. So anyway, let me know what you think. I'm uh, curious. Make comments. I love the chit chat back and forth. That's great. We all learn that way. If you like this type of thing, please like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you real soon. Thanks. Have a great night. Boop.